Hello everyone and welcome once again to Brandeo Collection. Today we're taking a look specifically at the Mandalorian Hot Toys Collection. We have a couple different figures that are here representing the Mandalorian both seasons 1 and 2 and everything kind of in between there. So what we're going to do is we'll jump in, take a look at each figure individually, do some close-ups, and talk about each of these figures in a little bit of detail. Now, if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell notification. It helps us grow our channel and bring to you more content just like this and anything else that is pop culture collectible related. So let's jump on over and take a look specifically at these Hot Toys figures from The Mandalorian. Here we have the Durasteel version of Mando, the first initial release by Hot Toys when the Mandalorian 1-6 scale collection really, really started. I did do some modifications to the figure. I took all the different pieces off and I modified the undersuit where now he has a more dynamic range of movement on his elbows, on his knees, which allowed him to get into the pose that I've had him in for quite a while now here in my collection. I really, really love this pose now that the figure has the ability to do so because of those modifications I made to the figure. It actually is really easy to do the modification. It just takes some time, some patience, a little bit of cutting with scissors of the undersuit once you get down to it. But once you get down there and once you put all the pieces back together, you can see you wouldn't even know the difference other than just having a more dynamic range of movement now available to the posability of this Durasteel version of Mando. On our season one shelf for Mando, we do have a plaque that is signed by one of the actors who is in the suit for Mando, and that is Brendan Wayne. It's between him and Latif Crowder whenever you see Mando on the screen in the three seasons. Barry Lowen was also someone who did a couple shots or scenes here or there throughout uh, the early seasons of Mandalorian, but Brendan Wayne is kind of the main guy that's in the majority of your scenes whenever you see Mando in the first three seasons. So it's really, really cool to have him represented on this plaque with our season one Hot Toys figures. Here we have the IG-11 figure once again from season one of The Mandalorian. I have him in how he kind of looked in the first episode of Mandalorian. He does have a decent amount of posability for a figure that is just really simple, but at the same time, a dynamic 1-6 scale figure in total. There are some die cast pieces on the figure. You can move his head around. He does come with an interchangeable chest piece that has the self-destruct bomb right there in his chest if you do want to change that out for a different type of display option. But I do like him here with the two guns, with that opening battle when he's first introduced to us. Uh, just something to add. Really, really cool dynamic piece to my Mandalorian Season 1 shelf, going hand in hand with the uh, figure there of the Durasteel Mandalorian. And here we have Bo-Katan in her helmeted profile. It also comes with the unmasked Bo-Katan head sculpt as well, which I think looks great, but I do prefer to have the helmeted look. I think it just looks cooler as a shelf presence. We do have some modifications on this figure, which include the Darksaber, which actually comes from the Moth Gideon figure, which I don't own, but I did buy the Darksaber separately online. And then on Etsy, I got a custom shoulder plate there, the Beskar plate with the Mandalorian symbol on there, the Mythosaur, that's from season three. So as of right now, Hot Toys has not made a season three version of Bo-Katan, so there's no official shoulder plate from Hot Toys. This is a custom one that someone on Etsy made, but I really like this look, so I went along and modified the figure just slightly uh, with these pieces that I purchased outside of what initially comes with the figure out of the box. Here we have another version of the Mandalorian, this time in his full-on Beskar armor. This is the initial Beskar armor figure Hot Toys made before they actually went back and released the chrome version of this figure, probably only a month or two after this initial figure was released, which upset some people within the Hot Toys community, but I actually still really enjoy this figure, and that's why I have kept this one and not purchased the other one. Just like my Durasteel figure, I did take the pieces off and modify the undersuit to make him much more poseable, and because of that, it 
does give me the opportunity to put him in some really super dynamic poses, but I actually have him in a very simple pose here. Once again, this figure has modifications, including that Beskar staff that he has is actually another piece I purchased from a individual seller on Etsy. Then he has some custom armor pieces that make him look more like season two and three. Those are from an Etsy seller as well, just to kind of make him look more like he does currently in the timeline of the Mandalorian TV show. He does come with two different versions of Grogu, who at the point when this figure was released didn't have a name yet, but now we know it's Grogu. We have the regular standing version of him, and we also have the version that comes in the floating pram, which I actually have displayed with the Durasteel Mando. So we have these two different versions of Grogu that we have ever since this. Hot Toys has released many, many versions of Grogu in 1-6 scale, life-size in 1-4 scale. So there's lots of options out there depending on if you want to add a Grogu to your personal collection. Here we have another figure that was in my top 10 Hot Toys in my collection right now, a video I did a few months ago that you can check out here on our channel, and that is the repainted armor Boba Fett. I really, really love this figure. Now this one doesn't come with the Tamora Morrison head sculpt, which I think is great, and I might purchase that separately down the road, but even as it stands, this figure has great posability, has a wonderful shelf presence, and I just think the way that this armor looks and how it is designed and created by Hot Toys in the 1-6 scale form really, really makes it look realistic. So when you take pictures of this figure in the right type of lighting, in the right type of situation, you could really pass this off as an actual screenshot from one of the shows, whether that be The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, or anything like that. So really, really love this figure, and it definitely deserves to be in my personal top 10 of Hot Toys that stand in my collection currently. And finally, we have the initial release of Ahsoka Tano that Hot Toys has done. This is the version from Season 2 of The Mandalorian. It is a DX figure, so it has different bases, it has different accessories, it has the moving eyes, which actually has become more of a common occurrence in Hot Toys figures as within the last year or two, but this is a great figure, and I do see, of course, there are other versions of Ahsoka that Hot Toys will be releasing very soon based on her appearance in her own personal show that came out last year. Those figures look great as well. I know there are some slight differences in her appearance between Mandalorian and Ahsoka, which then once again gets represented in 1-6 scale form as well. So we'll see once those Ahsoka figures from the show, I should say, get officially released if we're going to change out between this version to one of the ones from that show. But as of right now, I'm happy to have Ahsoka represented in my Hot Toys Star Wars collection because she is such an important character throughout the entire timeline and history of the Star Wars movies, television, and so forth. Thank you so much for taking some time and spending it with us to take a look at each of these Hot Toys figures, specifically from the Mandalorian line. We absolutely love these figures. They're some of the biggest highlights of our Star Wars 1-6 scale collection. So I was happy to go and take a little bit more detailed look at each of them. If you haven't already, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, subscribe to our channel, and remember to hit that bell notification, that way you're notified the moment we post brand new pop culture collectible content right here on our channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep on collecting.